All right, what we're going to start talking about in this lesson is what we call real GDP, real gross domestic product. Now, at this point, you should understand what gross domestic product is, and what we're now going to do is we're going to dig in deeper with this idea of gross domestic product. And if you recall back to when we were learning about uh, inflation, when we were learning about price level stability, one of the words that came up was the word real. And one of the things that you learned how to do was how to calculate the real price of a product based on what was called its nominal price. And the idea there was this, is as time passes, as prices go up, if you want to compare products that are sold, let's say, in 2015 to products that were sold in, let's say, 2002, well, between 2002 and 2015, the prices of products have gone up. So we don't want to really compare, for example, a candy bar in 2015 to a candy bar in 2002 because the price has gone up. So what we do is we deflate the price from 2015 down to the price of 2002. And that's the exact same idea with this concept of real GDP. We're concerned about the fact that as we have been adding up all of the output, the prices, the sales prices of the output over time within the economy, over time prices are going up and therefore inflation is included in our GDP calculations. And that's a problem for us. I'm going to try and explain that throughout this lesson. So let's start with, I'm going to give you a definition for a phrase. It's called nominal GDP. Okay, so let's go nominal GDP. So here's what I'm saying is that in order for you to understand real GDP, I need you to first understand nominal GDP. Nominal GDP is the sum of the money value of all output in prices current to the year of production. Okay, so here's what I mean by that. We already know that GDP is the sum of the money value of all output in one year, right? Well, what I'm saying is that this is GDP. It is the sum of the money value of all the products that are produced. But we're adding up using prices that are current to that particular year. So. GDP, nominal GDP for 1972 will be in the prices of 1972. And then when we do nominal GDP for 1987, we're not going to deflate the prices. We're going to go ahead and add, all, add up all the prices as they were, as all the things were sold in 1987. But because there was inflation, between 1972 and 1987, in that 15 years, there was inflation. And so that nominal GDP is going to include that inflation. And we'll talk about that in just a couple minutes. So when we say nominal GDP, what we're talking about is in the prices of the time. So if it's nominal GDP for 1997, then it's in the prices, using the prices in 1997. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and put up uh, the numbers for nominal GDP for the United States between 1929 and 2018. And I'm going to put them up right now. 
Okay, so what you're looking at here in this table is all of the nominal GDP in the United States from 1929 all the way up until 2018. And I want to focus on this. Uh, I want you to see this thing. It says trillions of dollars. And that means that every single one of these numbers, you know, this in 1980, this doesn't mean that we produced $2.85 worth of stuff in 1980. Uh, I personally spent more than $2.85 in 1980, and I was only eight years old. Uh, so um, what this is, is this number is $2,857,000,000,000, then the millions, then the thousands, etc. Okay, so this is a ginormous number, okay? And as you can see, nominal GDP, which remember is, is the price of the time. So in the prices of the time. So this number right here, this 0.105 uh, trillion, which is really just 105 billion, that is in the prices of 1929. And so part of the reason that these numbers are going up over time is simply because the prices of things are going up over time. And you have to keep that in mind when you look at these numbers for GDP because they are all nominal GDP. Okay, so now somewhere in this class there should be a link to a PDF that gives you a, a, a sheet, a one page, uh, that says the nominal GDP for the United States. It's important for you to print that up so that you can have this during this lesson. So you may want to go print that up right now and then continue this lesson. All right, so now that you have, you see what the nominal GDP is, you could also have taken a screenshot of, the, uh, of this video. So if you have to, go back and take a screenshot of all those numbers for nominal GDP. But you're going to need those numbers because I'm going to try and explain some stuff and we're going to do some examples of problems using all those numbers for the nominal GDP for the United States. All right, so here's what you have to understand. So we said that nominal GDP is in the prices of the time, but remember that prices increase over time. And because prices increase over time, there's something interesting that's going to happen with all those nominal GDP numbers. We know that GDP, gross domestic product, it's supposed to be the money value of the output. So we know that in nominal GDP, one of the things that's in there is the changes in the output in the economy. As we produce more stuff, the, the GDP, the value, the money value of GDP will go up because there's more stuff. So in 2016, if we produced more stuff than 2015, then that's a higher money value because there was more stuff and each one of those items had a money value that was added in, so we're going to have a larger money value overall because there's a larger output, so we'll have a larger GDP. But the thing is that nominal GDP, I'm going to put N GDP, okay, includes, uh, it, it increases for two reasons. Now, one reason that nominal GDP increases is because from year to year, generally speaking, there's an increase in output. So because of increases in output in the economy, we're, uh, then GDP is going to go up. And that makes sense because GDP is supposed to be a measure of output production. So if we have an increase in output production, we should also have an increase in GDP. But here's the other thing. Not nominal GDP is also going to increase because of increases in prices, and that's inflation. So it could be that nominal GDP that the sum of the money value, because it's done in the prices that are current to the year of production, that if the prices went up, then nominal GDP will go up as well. And I'm going to give you a little example here. Uh, let's, let's, uh, maybe we'll do it right here. 
Okay, I got this little example for you. Let's say that we have in, in a very, very tiny economy, very, very small economy, uh, candy bars are one dollar and we produce three candy bars in one year. So if we now multiply three candy bars times one dollar, that is three dollars. And so nominal GDP for, for that year is three dollars because we produced three items they were one dollar each and therefore uh, we there was three dollars in expenditure right consumption expenditure all right now let's say the next year after that the price of a candy bar goes up to a dollar twenty five and we produce and sell four candy bars well four candy bars times a dollar twenty five that's five dollars and so now nominal GDP has gone up by two dollars. So nominal GDP in one year is three dollars, the next year nominal GDP is five dollars. But here's the thing, what some people might think, what some people might think is that because nominal GDP went up by two dollars and at the time of the three dollars the price of a candy bar was one dollar, they might think to themselves that output was five because the, the GDP is now five dollars. But you can see here that output was only four. Well, how did we get to five dollars in output if we only produced four units? Well, it's because output went up, but also the price went up. And so because both of these things went up, GDP went up. So now what if we wanted to try and understand, what if we wanted to take the effects of the price out of this five dollars here okay well what we could do is we could uh, just like we did with doing the real price we could remove the effects of inflation okay well how much inflation did we experience here as we went from one year to the next year the price went up by 25 cents and it was one dollar okay well to find the amount of inflation we'll have to take the price from the new year, right, we're going to do new minus old divided by old, okay, so new price minus old price divided by old price. So the new price is $1.25 minus the old price, which is 1, divided by the old price, which is 1, and so one twenty-five minus 1, that's 0.25 divided by the old price of 1, and that is 0.25. And what that means is that we have experienced 25% inflation. Okay, so the prices have gone up by 25%. Sure enough, 25% of $1 is 25 cents. Add that back onto the dollar and we get $1.25. Okay? All right, so what we can do is the way we deflate a price, right, is we take that price and divide by 1 plus the percentage increase. So 1 plus 0.25, 1 plus 0.25, that's 1.25. And we're going to divide this $5. So instead of dividing the price, we're going to divide the nominal real GDP, or the not, excuse me, the nominal GDP. So we're going to divide 5 by $1.25, 1.25, and that would give us 4. And so what we can say is by taking out the effects of inflation, we now come to what the GDP would have been if there was no inflation. And now when we look at $4, $4 makes more sense because $4 is what nominal GDP would have been if we had increased production to 4 but if we had kept the old price. And so what we're doing here, the reason that we have this word real, okay, Nominal means by name only. Okay, that's what nominal means. It means by name. Real means what is really happening behind the scenes. And here, what we're trying to find out is what's really happening in production. Nominal GDP is giving us both a price increase and a production increase. But we really, really just want to know what is the production increase. Well, why, by taking away the inflation, and bringing us down to four dollars we can see what's really happening we can see we divide the four dollars by the one dollar and we get four units we find out that we only produced four units so we had an increase of 
in production, but it wasn't an increase from three to five, it was an increase from three to four, okay? All right, so let me, let me show you one more thing. Uh, why don't you go dig out, pause this video and go dig out your CPI data. Uh, let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so what you should have, this is the nominal GDP data. Hopefully you, uh, you were able to print this up or you have a screenshot of this. And then from back in the lesson on uh, price level stability, when you learned about inflation, uh, I introduced you to the consumer price index and you should have a way to be able to uh, download this page as well. And so what you need in front of you right now is you need both the consumer price index information and you need the nominal GDP information. And here's what I'd like for you to do. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna put, I would like for you to identify uh, for the following years. Uh, identify for 1982 and for 1983 and for 1984 and for 1985. I'd like for you to identify the CPI for each of those years. And I'd like for you to identify the nominal GDP for each of those years using these pieces of paper, okay? So go ahead and do that, I'll do it, and we'll come back. All right, so you may wanna check your numbers to my numbers. You can see here we got the CPI for 82, 96.5, then 83 is 99.6, 103.9, .9, and 107.6 for 84 and 85. Now these nominal, uh, nominal GDP uh, for 82 through 85, I wanna remind you that these are all in trillions of dollars, okay? So um, I can put a little T over here on the side, but I wanna just, just remember that this is in trillions of dollars. That means we're moving that decimal point over uh, 12 places. That's a long way to go. So we got, our, we got our trillions, our billions, then our millions, then our thousands, et cetera, okay? All right, so here's what I wanna show you. What we said is that nominal GDP increases for two reasons, because there's an increase in output and because there's an increase in prices. And you can see here that nominal GDP is in fact going up. We got 3.3 up to 3.6, then 4.0, then 4.3. So nominal GDP is definitely increasing. But look at the CPI. CPI is representative of prices, the price level, right? And from 82 to 83, our CPI goes up 96.5 up to 99.6. That's an increase in prices. Then we have another increase in prices to 84. And then we have another increase in prices. This is what I mean. This is what I'm telling you when I say that nominal GDP increases for two reasons. Because there's more output in the economy. Good. That's what we want. We want to be producing more stuff. But... It's an inaccurate measure because it includes increases in prices. And here's what I'm telling you, here's where I'm moving to, is that we want to deflate, and put the word deflate. We wanna take out the inflation from nominal GDP and deflate it so that we can reveal only the output increases. We want to reveal only the output increases. We're not interested in being fooled by the increases in prices over time. We want to be able to make a comparison where the only thing we're comparing are increases in output production. And that's where real GDP comes in.